right, we're at camp. We've uh, pretty much set up now. It didn't take too long, really. Um, we was a bit worried about the rain that's um, forecast. It's going to be really heavy rain, so we're, uh, should we say we're uh, well equipped in case that happens. I'm not alone, as you can probably hear in the background, so we'll just get him on screen now. Come on, don't be shy. It's only YouTube. <laughs> See on the screen there? Say hello, YouTube. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> This is Chris, this is um, Jumper One's son-in-law, um, just down for a little while just to do an overnight camp, just to see what it's all about. So, after this evening, no longer going to be a camp virgin, right? I know. <laughs> so it's going to be fun. We've both got different setups, and I'll just show you them now. Here's Chris's setup. He's gone for the, the Dutch Army bivvy, right? With a DPM basher as a ground sheet, with just a standard fly tarp on the top. And, and the way that's configured with the, uh, the A-frame um, paracord there from a ridge line. Perfect. Yeah, it's not going to get wet under there. There's some um, a little bit of kit that we brought along, not too much really. <laughs> it's my setup there. I've got the DD 4x4 tarp massive because I've got a lot of expensive equipment with me. In fairness, probably around four thousand pounds worth, so I don't really want to get it wet. So first time for me, I'm going nice and simple. Um, got a parachute wrap. Uh, ground sheet, swept some um, leaves up underneath it to give it a bit of comfort. I've got a camp um, self inflating mat, little blow up pillow and an amazing wool blanket. It's my first time I've used this one and I'm so lucky to find it. Let me just show you what it is all about. There it is. You know, you know the rest. You can get your Italian wool blanket, that's great. This is uh, total great, allegedly. These are so hard to find now. And as you can see, it's 100% genuine wool, and it's so thick, it's so well made, so comfy. That is a, that's the rest of a rest of life blanket right there. It's totally cool. You can tell by the stitching along there, and it's not blended. It's totally thick. I couldn't tell you how thick that is. That's all it is. A really strong um, ground sheet there, which I'll put some um, eyelets. They're not very good quality, but it does. It's good enough. Swept loads of debris underneath, as I said, just to raise it a little bit there. South and freight mat by Camp. That is nice thick as well. It's really good. Cheap old uh, blow-up pillow, and of course that luxury outdoor camping blanket. <laughs> Happy as Larry. All this is, is my waterproof clothing kit. That's all it is. Nice and simple. It's Flectan um, Gore-Tex top and bottom. As you can probably guess, that is the hood of the jacket. Right there. And it's just rolled up all inside itself. Nice and neat to make it very easy to get to. The lesson is, if you take your time and you plan and prepare stuff and you pack everything well, leave a little bit of room in your backpack as well because invariably when you pack up to go, it seems like a bit rushed and to get it all fitted in, it's a bit of a pain. So just make sure you've got a bit of room, it just makes it easy to pack away. The trousers, these are fantastic man, you can just zip them straight over your boots, you ain't got to worry about taking the boots off. And you get a nice little pair of uh, braces as well to go over yourself to pull them up. So there's no way you're going to be losing weight and they're going to be falling down. So that's basically that. The waterproof system just rolls up all into the hood there. It's a great way to carry it and you ain't got to worry about splitting the load. It's all in one package. Well, the K-Bar is going to be getting played with today. It's been too long now. And um, because my good buddy Ken, K-Jumper One's not here with us, he's currently in the US. This is dedicated to him, so we're doing some US Marine stuff. Rather than just plain old water, we're going to be having some of this. Lemon and lime, why not? Sounds nice, doesn't it? There it is, there. Calories down us now. 
Just taking this from the stream. Yeah, it's probably dead. Good for me. For those who, um, of you who are interested in this sort of stuff, um, what I've just put in there can be found in the current United States MRE pack. While I'm giving that a stir, let's see what we've got in there. Yeah, 12 fluid ounces prepared, calories, 130 calories. That's more calories than just straight water, right? Plus, I'm sure it's going to taste nice as well. Yep, that's pretty much mixed. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Oh, I'm loving that already. Right, we've got some night vision gear we're going to be trying out tonight to see how it goes. Um, really looking forward to this. My personal favourite is this one. This is just pretty awesome. It's a Pulsar Recon 750R. This is the recordable version, hence the letter R. You put an SD card in there, and you can uh, use the um, video guide there. And you can pretty much record anything. It's got infrared there, so nothing's gonna escape that. I think it records sound as well, which is brilliant. Obviously, you can screw it to your tripod, your camera, brilliant. This sort of gadget here is pretty cool. Gonna be giving this this first ever shot. It takes six AA batteries, it's a pretty juicy bugger. And you can just set it up for um, motion sensor. So you can set it up for um, badgers, other animals, and anything else you want to uh, capture on film, really. Again, that covers in audio HD sound. And the granddaddy of them all, this is the Pulsar weapon scope. Night vision, of course, you've got rail mounts there straight onto your weapon. You've got an external battery pack. And it takes four AA batteries, it just slides straight into there, unscrew that, in they go, screw it back on. And you've got all of the, the various functions, focus, you've got the zoom, and you've got your manual focus there. Because it's digital and it's not dark yet, you can open it up. And that's what you're gonna see, it's a, it's a pretty funky bit of kit. So, no matter how safe you are, you think you are in the dark, with this, <laughs> we can see you. And if you don't want to look through the eyepiece, you've got a little camera screen there, which you've got like a menu functions, you can set all sorts of uh, sight ratios and everything on there, it's pretty good. So we're going to be trying out all that funky kit tonight. I know it's going to be raining and it costs a lot of money, hence that's why I've got a huge big 4x4 tarp up. So. We're going to try and film underneath here. So uh, the badger activity was very prominent last weekend. So are the foxes. So I'm not sure if the rain's going to sort of um, put a damper on that, but we're going to try. And all of that just fits inside the old uh, rust valve bag. That is an amazing uh, little rucksack, by the way, with the AR-15 mag pouch on the top there. Perfect for my hip flask. <laughs> it's munch. You know, if you've got magazines in there as well, we've all seen this before. You, know, you can put your bladder back in there, it's just wicked. 9mm magazine pouch in the front there. Pretty much carry anything in it. Hygiene. That's all it is. It's simple. All you want is toothpaste and a toothbrush. And some wet wipes. It doesn't matter what the wet wipes are. These ones happen to have aloe vera and vitamin E in them. Very nice. But, before you think about what to fry them in, consider these. These are found in the um, British Army issue ration packs. I think your, um, your sundry pack and your brew kit and all that is in one of these. Really, really tough plastic. Very, very tough. And all you do is, the same as I always do really, just close it all up seal it about halfway, three quarters of the way, push as much air out as you can, and then just finish by locking it off. That way, you've got no air in there, and it's nice and small. And you can just fit it anywhere, really. Weather like this, you really do need to keep yourself clean. You really do. 
trying out this little bad boy for the first time in the field. Obviously I tested at home, made sure it was fine and it was. We're out in the woods now, things can be different. So, oh look at that millipede, how oh, cool. The first thing you need to do, see that little hole on there? Put your thumb over that, creating a seal. Just got a non-return valve in there, and you just prime it. I'll just put unleaded petrol in there, because it's uh, readily available, and there's a bit of a price war going on in the UK regarding fuel, so uh, take advantage of it. Fill up a few jerry cans and uh, you're sorted. So now I've got pressure in there, it's primed. All I've got to do now is turn that little lever downwards and then it's going to filter through there and coming out of the, uh, the vents balls and we're going to be good to go. It's going to be pretty crazy at first, but we're cool. So all I'm doing now is I'm just monitoring the flame and just wait for it to settle down because there's enough pressure in there and it's just going to turn blue and just uh, be some nice clean fuel for us to cook on. While that's doing its bit, I'm going to be using the uh, coffee percolator again because um, that is just wicked, really is cool. As you can see, the flame is starting to stabilise now. Walk from the stream again. Some coffee there, which I always store inside, so you can you don't get it lost really, and it's all nice, all in one area. That's pretty much that. Turn it down a bit. I don't really want to be melting myself. Make sure we've got all the crap off the bottom because you don't want it catching. And that's as complicated as it gets. Back soon when she's uh, on the boil. Yo! Coffee! That's pretty cool, right? <laughs> Funky Starbucks. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> What's that, a mochaccino, sir? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not telling you where the cream comes from, baby. <laughs> There you have it, boys and girls. That is pretty damn cool. Well, look what our Chris has been doing. <laughs> but having some fun with that machete. Here he is, look. That guy just done all that <laughs> with that little pen knife. <laughs> I'll tell you what. That is pretty tasty. Just bites like a right bitch, doesn't it? All right, so we're just gonna take, we got the, the cotton, it's pretty much a dress bandage, 100% cotton. Put it inside a modified Altoids tin. It's got a hole in the top, so it breathes. And then you just basically take the whole tin and throw it on the fire. Strategically placed, right? Just so, get it nice up in the under, get it nice and hot. And you'll see, 
on the hole. The yeah, little yeah. flame that comes out. Yeah, and the smoke. And That's the... when you know it's cooking, and then it'll turn into smoke. Yeah, when the smoke's gone, he's done. Nope. You can't really overcook it. <laughs> <laughs> when it's black, it's black, baby. And that's how easy it is. And I've actually tried this myself. I've done it a bit on a more controlled way on a little um, Coleman stove. And uh, mate, it's so easy. If I can do it, anyone can do it. It really is simple. And uh, yeah, we just cut back when it's done just to show you exactly what it's like inside. Well, we've taken the Altoids tin out of the fire. It didn't really take long, Chris, did it, to be honest? No. We're talking, it's probably in there for less than four minutes. It's probably been about the same, maybe a bit longer. Just come outside and uh, You'll know when it's done because it won't be smoking, there won't be flames coming from the hole. Oh yeah. Wow, that's done. Just pulls apart. So fragile, isn't it? Char cloth. So easy, isn't it? <laughs> Just found out a great little um, idea you can use with the Rush 12 511 bag. <laughs> Tactical beer storage. How cool is that? That simple, just tie a knot into the top. Make sure she's not going to come off. There's two there. You send them into the creek. How simple is that? Where's Ken? Oh yeah, he's in the States, isn't he? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, Ken. Hi, Ken. <laughs> you don't want to be here, Ken. It's terrible, isn't it? We're having a really bad time. It's horrible. It's just really crap. <laughs> so you're right. <laughs> you can hear it all around us. As well as that blooming aeroplane in the distance. But for a pile of um, old rotten logs, getting a lovely fire on a go there. It's really nice. So it's a good idea, really, because as I said on my very first video I've ever done, well, first night in the woods video, it's the way I was trained, really. No matter where you are in the UK, when you arrive at a suitable location, the first thing you do is to put your shelter up, no matter what. The first thing you do. If it does rain, you can get your firewood under there, keep it dry, you've got a chance, you've got your kit dry. What you don't want to do is to set your sleeping bag out, go and get some firewood, then it starts to rain, then you've got to quickly put your shelter up. It's not good practice. So, as you can tell behind us, all our kit is all safely stowed away, so we'll have no problems, to be honest. Um, Offer packs pretty light for me, really, considering I didn't even need the side rocket pouches on my Bergen, which is probably a first actually. But, um, oh, Chris, wow, <laughs> he's brought kitchen sink, can that right, Chris? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's brought some kit. There's no chance we're going to get wet tonight, not a chance. We'll go underneath now. Well, oh, look at that, the little light comes on as well, how cute. And what I thought I'd do, I don't usually do this because usually I've got all my kit packed in a bag and ready. But um, I thought, because I've got quite a big covering, um, it'd be nice just to lay it all out in a particular order, nice and neatly, so I can get access to it whenever I want. There's the empty bag in there. And all of the kit just laid up along there. Obviously the sleep system's in place. Sunglasses, don't use the sunglasses. And just a few odds and sods here as well, including the first aid kit. Um, it's an important lesson to learn, lads. When you go out doing overnight, it's always have a first aid kit. I can't tell you how important it is. I mean, I've got loads in there. Max Position Medic Pouch there. It feels weird, actually, not having it all stowed away. But um, Mind Wise Man Pete does it this way. So I thought, yeah, try something different for once, you know? Get it all to hand. Look underneath, there's loads and loads of room. Four metres by four metres under here. We're going to be nice and dry, no problem at all. And I'll tell you what, one thing I did do, I don't know if you can see the um, 
the center of the top there is going up to where that, that Y branch is. So how am I going to get my paracord over there to pull it down? And I use um, the little monkey fist from Quality Jackson. He sent quite a few out to some of us lads. And uh, yeah, it really worked. I think it's the third attempt, third time lucky. Straight over there, pulled it down and uh, tied it off. And now we've got a peak. So when it does rain, it's just going to run down there rather than form a big puddle in the middle because that's what would happen if I didn't do that. So let's have a little walk around camp. It's nice and dark under here. I'm not sure where it's coming out. But there's Chris, good to go. All of his kits neatly stowed away underneath, which is great. The last thing you want is it all over the place outside and then get caught out. You know, not only could you get it wet, you could get it lost as well in the panic of trying to get it all stowed away. You got reflective trainers on, Chris. What's that? Reflective trainers. Sneakers, sorry. <laughs> wow, they're really coming out. New balance, right? Yep, new balance. And um, as I said before, he's got the uh, Dutch. Here he is. Having fun, mate? I'm having a great time. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Even if it is raining, doesn't matter. I mean, luckily we're under canopy, so we're not we're getting soaking wet at the moment. And there it is, loads of space in there. What are you, six what kid will take? Six one. Yeah, six one. And he fits in there nice and easy. He's probably got about between a foot, two feet at the end of his head when he's all the way to the bottom. And uh, you can fit big guys in them. Pack in there, yeah, as well. packs in there as well, yeah, yeah, nice. As I think, a mind wise man and uh, Jack Law knives, as uh, both got them, yeah, very, very good bits of kit from what I've been hearing. And you don't have to go mad and spend a fortune on tarps, we just got a standard flight sheet tarp here, right? Yeah, no problem at all. At the end of the day, it'll keep you bloody nice and dry, mate, won't it? Yeah, and you can hear the rain. But luckily, because we're under all this canopy, we can't really feel it, which is great. Let's go and see how that fire's doing in the rain. I think we're okay. Wood store, might be an idea to get under cover actually. Yeah, because I was explaining to Chris, because we're using um, rotten logs which are dry, they burn really, really quick. Hence that is uh, turned into a lovely bed of coals there. If that was like um, freshly cut deadwood, which isn't rotten, man, you've probably got another hour left on top of what it is now. Good enough to cook on at the moment, no problem at all. There's the lovely stream that everyone keeps uh, talking about. I'll show you what it looks like now. As you can see, it's not very deep. You can even see that log there. And if the forecast is correct, when we wake up in the morning, I don't think that log's going to be there. I think it's going to be down there somewhere. Um, if you look at the, um, the ridge on the side of this bank here, when um, Roach and myself was here in January, when we had that big, heavy, 12 hours solid brain, it was right up to the top of that ridge, all the way across, and it was just green-brown mud water just running down there. So uh, that side of the river got flooded. I camped literally right behind that tree, you can see in the middle of the shot there, and uh, nice and dry, very lucky. And uh, yeah, if I believe, if I remember right, Roach was uh, slept right there. Here's a little wood stall. Got some big old logs around it, just protecting from most of the elements. Uh, there's a few uh, smaller pieces in there, pre-cut. So that's basically us now. We're just going to uh, just chill out under the tarp and then enjoy the sound of the rain hitting the plastic, which is always nice. <laughs> Happy as Larry, mate. Hey, good to get out of the house, right? Very good. <laughs> it's good to be outdoors. Sure is. In all weathers, doesn't matter. As my old sergeant told me, your skin's waterproof, don't worry about it. 
Well, just had a little look around and come up all these cramp balls. How cool is that? I don't really want to get them wet though, but um, I'm going to dry them out nicely now and that should see me through this year and well into next year, no problem at all. So I've got ample practicing I can do with um, making fire using these. Really, really nice bit of kit. I just can't believe how lucky I was. It's on exactly the same tree as I found the one I showed on the previous video, only on the other side. And it appears that it's a fallen birch, fallen for a couple of years, and over a stream. That seems to be the ideal conditions for these things to thrive. I mean, take a look at these. They're beautiful, the size of it. Really, really nice. And when you cut them up inside, that's what they look like. Nice. Lightweight as anything, it's like balsa wood. So that's all them nice and sorted out. Just goes to show, if you just keep your eyes open and have a look around. Oh, I mean, in fairness, Chris found most of these. He's having a nice time. <laughs> so we've got quite a few cramp balls in there now, which is great. Well, the rain's coming down, but the canopies are quite good. It's pretty much greened up everywhere around there. And as you can see, the fires are going nice and strong. It's quite a substantial fire because, you know, if it does get really, really heavy, as you all know, you know, the badder your fire, the more chance you've got of it actually staying lit. If you've got a tiny little fire, man, you've got no chance. It's just going to get washed out. So it's um, coming up to 18.30 hours um, this evening. And um, we just having a nice chat around the campfire, walking around, finding some um, dry wood that's just hanging in the air on trees and just adding it to the fire and uh, it's pretty nice really because even though it is raining you do get a little bit of spit on you now and again but it's like warm weather so it's like a warm rain pretty much like a shower, it's really nice and we're all under the tarp, it's a huge tarp everything's nice and dry really looking forward to trying that um, Really top quality wool blanket out tonight. Really can't wait. So that's pretty much it. You know, we're just uh, having a nice old chat. Um, we're learning from each other, really. I mean, I don't know all, nor does Chris, but together, you know, we're learning stuff. Which is what it's all about, you know. You don't got to go online to learn. You can actually speak in the old-fashioned way. <laughs> can you hear that sound? Rain hitting the tarp, boys. You can't beat it. I and mean, we're going to be getting some pretty substantial heavy showers throughout the course of the next 12 14 hours. It's just really comforting to know you're going to be nice and dry when it happens. And uh, Chris is absolutely covered in insect repellent, so. Don't worry about his little legs. <laughs> well, it's about time I've got something to eat, really, because uh, I'm getting hungry. I thought I'd try something different. I've got loads of them, so why not try them? Mountain House. Nice and simple. Boil some water, pour it inside. Food. No washing up, nothing. you just got a mucky bag, and that's it, really. So the first thing's first. Get some water in there. Two hundred and fifty mils on the edge of the Crusader mug. You've got um, a half liter point, which is five hundred mils. So you just have half of that. What can be simpler, really? I'm going to put a little bit more in because some of that's going to get lost through evaporation. That's it. That's pretty much it. You just put it near the fire. Incidentally, just make a bit of room there. Just put it near the embers, nice and simple. That's all there is to it. Nothing fancy. I mean, I've got my stove I used earlier for the coffee. Why waste the fuel when you've got something as beautiful as that to muck around with? It's not rocket science really, is it? We're underneath the canopy so the camera's nice and dry. You can hear the rain all the way around us. Fire's going lovely as you can see. Water's in the boil, didn't take too long. And we've got two tear marks there. Just 
strip it off. First thing you gotta do before you do anything else is to remove your hydration sachet there. And make sure everything's good. And all we gotta do now is just put the water in. Oh, it's hot. Damn, it's hot. That's it there. And you just leave it for 10 minutes. Then you can eat. Easy as that. Well, it's uh, 1900 now, exactly. We had some massive um, thunder cracks earlier. And the rain's coming down quite heavy now. So that's the decision to move under the tarp. Sensible, really. I mean, if I really need to go outside, I can just put my water boots on, everything's fine. This has probably had the required amount of time now. What I forgot to show you was, when I zip this up, you should give it a stir first. So as soon as I've done that and stopped recording, I thought, oh no, stir it up. So that's had a good long time to um, soak up the water now. Uh, it feels like it's um, pretty much hydrated all the way through. Can't feel any hard dry bits in there. This is chicken and vegetables in a black bean sauce with noodles. So this is pretty much a Chinese takeaway. <laughs> Makes a change, doesn't it, from the curry, I suppose. So yeah, give that a really good mix around. And one of the good things about these pouches is right at the bottom, they're all like a bowl. There's no like sharp bits where dry food can get stuck in. So it's everything will get mixed up. If you have got any dried bits in there, spit them out, eat them, whatever you want to do. But you might get some, you probably won't get many. So the bag's a really strong mylar, so I'm using my spork in there and it's not puncturing it. I just want to make sure that every single bit is really, really mixed up well. well once these are sealed, they stay hot for ages. So. All I'm going to do is I'm going to seal that back up and just give it some more time. So now and again you're going to get some water filling up there. You can either decide to keep it, collect it. But I've got the, um, the filter bottle there, I've got a screen there. Every now and again, rather than letting it stress, just help it along. As long as you keep doing that, you're not going to get into any too much trouble really. I say if you wanted to, you can put strategically placed pots or any method of collection of the rainwater underneath and it's just stripped straight into that. Either way, you're not going to dehydrate, put it that way. Well it's been um, sat in that pouch zipped up for quite a while now. I've lost count, not really fast. It still feels very, very hot. So I know it's going to be pretty much um, soaked up. So it feels nice and uh, feels nice and moist in there now. Let's see if you can see inside exactly what it looks like. There you go. Pretty much all hydrated. Now Chris has um, kindly offered me some um, salt, pepper, etc, etc. Looks like he's got his own spice rack. <laughs> Man, he really has brought the kitchen sink. But you do have to pay attention to the sagging now and again, and you do have to keep on tipping it off. If you don't, it's just going to bulge too much, and it could get a bit stressy. I think the rain's finally arrived, which is nice, great. Everything's nice and dry, which is the important thing. I love it. about these there's no artificial stuff in there it's all real all the chicken is like stringy but it's real chicken just um, dehydrated and I've just rehydrated it that's all it is and the fact that it's got no artificial ingredients in there is brilliant 
are probably why they're expensive because they haven't got to put all the cheap crap in there, it's all good stuff. And um, best before 2017. It's not bad, is it, really? And I've no doubt it'd probably be right to 2020 if kept in the right place. So, if anyone's interested in getting some of these, they weigh nothing, they really don't. I'll get them from um, a website called B Prep, and I'll put the link in the description below. Um, ask him, um, I'll send you, and you'll get a discount. I think you get 5 or 10% off. So, um, worth a try. Yeah, you don't know until you try things, so. The sample packs are good, I think they're about £50, and you get like all different ones you can try, rather than just take potluck, you know, you can try all different ones. It'll definitely keep me going as well. Got some nice desserts in as well. You're going to love this. Here's dessert, fellas. Look at the E numbers and stuff in there. <laughs> you ain't going to believe it. I think there's about 17 E numbers. <laughs> it's um, British Army issue mango cake. So we're going to be trying that for the first time as a dessert. The same rule applies, you've just got a little peel it off. And that's what you've got inside. A very Dodgy energy laden cake there. Wow. It's probably got a ridiculous amount of calories in there. Wow. That's. That is delicious. Oh, it's too good for YouTube. That is fruity. Mmm, that's really nice. This is the life. gear on so it's a great opportunity to give it a test I've tried the top out but not the trousers so I want to make sure I'm a good out good, for a good hour or so just walking around just, just doing some a few camp tasks and just, just to see how they fare up really along with using the um, the k-bar knife to uh, to uh, process the wood really I haven't brought a saw out I just want to see how I fare with just one knife which is unusual for me because I usually have a selection but on this occasion it's just the k-bar what I wanted to do was, um, every now and again, the, um, the water keeps collecting in the tarp. And uh, it's probably every 20 minutes or so I have to keep getting up and just knocking the water off. So what I thought I'd do is, right in the middle of the tarp, I don't know if you can see behind me, or right out there somewhere, just above where the, the uh, top of this knife is, is the central point of the tarp where it's going like that. So what I'm going to do is guesstimate how long a stick I'm going to need and I can just push that up and it just disperses it all rather than keep getting up and down all the time. I mean it's nice to lie down and chill out but you know it's um, 7.45 at the moment so there's plenty of time for that later on so right now I'm going to nip off out, have a walk around, find a bit of hazel probably, something nice and straight that I can just um, round off from the edge so it won't go through the tarp just to uh, keep the water off rather than keep getting up and down. So uh, Also test out your kit. Well, this little piece here will be just right. Just clean off the, um, the little bits sticking out everywhere. Got my gloves on. It's all nice and wet, so we'll see how she chops. Oh, and there's plenty of other branches growing off of this tree, just loads. I don't think it's going to die off with just one of these taken off. It's 
Spets home with a couple of beers. Hey. Beers are good. Right, it's beer time. <laughs> Cheers guys. We thought we'd just have a cold one by the stream, right? <laughs> I wish we had more of these, but yeah, you can't win them all. This kept it nice and cool, actually, not too mm -hmm. bad, huh? Tolerable. Mm. <laughs> As you do. <laughs> if I had more, I'd chuck them. I don't want to chuck this because I want to savour this. It's too nice. Oh, what time we got? It's only quarter to ten. Not too bad. The rain's coming and going, mate. It's not. It's not like amazingly bad, is it? No. Yeah, I can hear the owls now and again, which is cool. I think I might have to get some brandy and a cigar on soon. <laughs> <laughs> Make a change on it. <laughs> Get the good bottle out. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, you want to try some, mate? You like Hennessy XO, yeah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here's to you, Ken. Proper drinking the nice stuff. I'm going to have half of that. And you're going to have the other half. <sighs> Two absent friends. Cigar time, which is always a nice time. Just did a lovely um, drop of the fine stuff with my mate Ken in the States. I've got the candle going and there's bloody flying things everywhere, so I apologise if oh, fuck it going like that now and again. We're going to be smoking one of these fine babies. If I remember right, this is from Rob, up here in Idaho. I've been sent about a few cigars now from about four different people. Five different people now, sorry. And it's hard to remember which one's from which type of what, um, what YouTuber. I'm pretty sure this is from Rob from Idaho. Nice torpedo cut there. Um, you can see the, um, the cap seal there. I'll probably take about half inch off the end of that. So all I do is I just moisten it first in case it all crumbles when I cut it. It's 
it's an old trick, been doing it for years. Trust the old cigar cut at all from Quality Jackson. Talk about in my element now. About there, it's perfect. Nice clips off the end. Turbo lighter, freshly filled up. I've got Ranger bands on the end there now, if you can see that. Just to have a bit of emergency fire lighting. That's cool. Tell you what, I just, what am I thinking? I've got a candle going there. Look, there's no need to um, use the light when I've got a bloody candle, haven't I? As always, you, got, you toast the cigar, yeah? You don't get the flame to actually touch it. You're just using the heat. I mean, the turbo light is probably more controlled because you get a bit of breeze now and again, it blows the flame. But um, it's more romantic, I suppose, doing it this way. Anyway, I'll get back to you when it's lit. This could take up to about five minutes. And you don't want to see this in five minutes, do you? Cheers, Ken. Wish you were here, buddy. We're having a great time. Chris is loving it too. Salute. Hit the spot. What a cigar, wow. Total quality, mate. You can't beat it. The pardon. Very, very nice. Look at the burn on that. Nice and even. That's what you're looking for. Beautiful clean cut too. It's a great draw, really nice. Yeah, from the opening stages, you can probably inhale about 40% of that. It's a great stick, so thanks Rob. Really appreciate that, mate. I think in total I've probably got about, one, two, three, four, four, maybe five left in the humidor, and that's it, completely gone. So I'm going to have to go on to um, a spend emission soon and get some. I'm thinking about getting a box of 25 Cahibas, something like that. Their quality, wow. Hi Ken, figured you'd want to see that. You know you'd like to see me drink from a Marine Corps glass. <laughs> proper booze too, yeah, boy. proper. That is smooth. Nice, huh? Mm. <laughs> I don't even want to shoot it. Just sip it. Wow, it's yours, man. You uh, you have a drink. Mm. It's like candy. <laughs> candy. Mm. Shit, that's a new one on me. <laughs> Now you just need a Drew Estate draw. Uh, I'm sorry, Drew Estate Java Mint Cigar. Wow, Java Mint Cigar, eh? Mm. Gonna blow on that. Real smooth, baby. Mm. That's from our friend over in Idaho. Idaho, <laughs> Idaho, baby. Yeah. It's real nice. Get out there. That's where it's at, right there. Mmm. <laughs> 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 
But it's um, just gone midnight now, and um, Chris has turned in. I'm about to turn in now. Just do a last few minute things before you bed down because make sure everything is zipped up and shut. Um, boots stuffed, they've got stuff inside so nothing can crawl inside. Gloves, everything packed away or zipped up because you don't want to leave anything open. Um, it's a bit damp, so things like mugs and cups, mess tins and stuff like that, if you leave them uncovered and not stowed away, you're going to wake up and they're going to be covered with slugs. It's happened to me before, a long time ago, and learnt the lesson. Always cover things up, put things away before you, you bed down. Now the ground sheet that's underneath this um, sleeping system I've got, I've just brushed all of the leaves and debris, everything, all off, all the way around it. And I've just down to my um, MTP lightweights and the Under Armour MTP top, nothing else, covered some myself in um, insect repellent wipes before I go to sleep. You don't have it eaten. Um, basically, just make yourself comfortable. Do what you've got to do to secure the camp and everything. Always sleep with your knife right next to you. Um, earplugs are about to go in soon. You can still hear a bit through them, so it doesn't completely block everything out. Just ensures that you get a nice, comfortable sleep rather than getting woken by, I don't know, thunder, rain, badgers, whatever. Um, that's basically it. Looking forward to trying this blanket out. It's really, really warm. And I've got a feeling it could be the same, if not better, than an Arctic bag. It's that good. So um, that's it for all today. It's been wicked. We've had a nice time in the evening. No good chat. All good, nothing bad, as they say. And it's time to sign out. So um, we'll see you in the morning. Night, guys. Morning, Chris. What the fuck was that? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Time to get up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Oh, man. Well, after the little wake-up call, I think we can have some coffee now. <laughs> oh, just been down to the stream and um, clean my teeth. Feel a whole lot better already. Had a quick wash. Uh, covered myself in mozzie wipes. Because I can hear them flying around my head under the blanket early hours. I think it's about four, half past four this morning. <laughs> Everywhere, so I'm not going to take any chances. I don't want to get bit, so it's all cooling again. Pretty soon, we should have some uh, coffee. Great stuff. I think the paramedics are on their way to try and uh, restart Chris. <laughs> <laughs> That was fun, I must admit.
And I feel like an nice cup of coffee. Real coffee. I had that on the go most of the night last night. Nice little bit of kit this. Looks pretty much like a claymore. I think they're mainly used by hunters and and whatnot. It's pretty much like a not a box design. Just open it up. Just nice, easy, idiot guide instructions there. And that's all you do. You just set it to whatever you want. Just turn it on, and um, you get the red light just flashes periodically until the correct time interval has been set. Once that's reached, it completely goes dark and stays dark until you just, it's a slight movement and you see the LEDs there. It's a very, very dim, I don't know, it's hard to describe, it's not even red or orange, it's, you can barely see it, but in, in that sort of um, shape there. If something moves, it's brilliant. I mean, I actually tried it, I set it up, and I don't know, I was probably only 15 yards away. Stood completely still, and all I'd done was went like that. And it set it off. <laughs> really, really nice bit of kit, that. So, um, it's got a little SD card in there. So I'm going to be taking that out um, later on. Hopefully putting the footage on this video. So it should be cool how it all comes out, really. Really privileged to um, try out really expensive, nice kit like this. And I don't have a little go with the um, uh, the Recon 750R as well. Quite tricky to get hold of. It's probably best if it's on the tripod rather than handheld. But I couldn't use it on the tripod because the little spy gadget I just had there was on the tripod, and I've only got one. So um, yeah, didn't really get much sleep last night because I was too busy filming with the rifle scope that recon are and I've got all that set up as well but because of the rain I think it pretty much put off the badges and all the rest of it that usually hang around in this woodland which is a shame because if this would have happened last weekend when it was planned man that was crazy when I was in the hammock there was all sorts running around there <laughs> that would have picked up something and it would have been great seeing it on film but there they go can't win them all but um, you never know I might have dozed off and it might have caught something, we'll see. So um, I'll finish off that coffee and uh, have some breakfast, I think. Nothing too serious, just a uh, fruity muesli, make a change. Here's Chris, going back to basics. He's using all the uh, traditional MRE stuff. Yeah, looking good, baby, I think you're good with that. Sorry to wake you up this morning, mate. <laughs> it's still alive, folks. He hasn't yeah. been shot three times. <laughs> well, what a way to wake up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'll get my comeuppance one day. <laughs> All I've got to do is smile. Shit. <laughs> oh, that looks like um, a Dutch Army mess tin there. Mm -hmm. Stainless steel, rolled edges. They are cool, aren't they? They're better than those aluminium things. Yeah. Wow. Am I read this morning which is going to be? Uh, we're going to go with grilled chicken and Mexican macaroni. <laughs> what for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> man, that's pretty funky. Didn't fancy bacon and eggs and some fried bread then, no? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, next time we'll do the old uh, proper frying pan job, yeah? The whole works. Stuff all this artificial crap, eh? <laughs> Real food. But yeah, it's been a... It's pretty cool because the rain seems to have stopped quite a while ago now. And uh, I think we'll be pretty much all right for the rest of the day. Time for some breakfast. <laughs> now I'm not going to eat a bloody knife. <laughs> Can you use it to open this little packet? Because why wouldn't you? And I'll tell you what, the weather's turned out lovely. Sun's coming up through the trees. Pretty cool. It's 
a bit of a weird one, but that's British Army issue muesli. And it's got like powdered milk in it as well, so you just add water as well as that. Tropical mix. That's also from an army ration pack. All goes in there. Loads goes in there. And uh, you heard what he said, just add water. Turns into milk, it's lovely. Whoa. These are a bit volatile, these bottles, because once pressurised, <laughs> once they're off, they're off. Should do. Nice and simple, no messing or washing up today. Mmm, loads of calories. We love that. Look at all that goodness in there. Wow. Only a few calories. <laughs> Trying to keep my pans all nice and clean. Yeah, I'm the same. I just don't like all that black burnt soot everywhere because it just gets on everything else, doesn't it? Nice work, Ken. This, um, Air Force rookies turning out pretty damn good. Clean gear is a happy gear. <laughs> this is my pen. There are many like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> Bullshit! I can't hear you. <laughs> Honestly, this is just wicked. The sun's come out. And all's good in Funky's place. This is just for Sandy with his little folding firebox. <laughs> well, can you see what it is yet? Yep, you're looking at a tree with some moss on it. If you look carefully, it's growing on one side and not the other. And the reason being, on most cases, is that the moss will always face north and I know for a fact that is north and I know for a fact that is south so if you do get a little bit lost look around for some trees with some moss and if you see four or five of them all in one direction you're going to know pretty much where north and south is which is a good start because you know if you lose your compass if you haven't got um, a needle, thread, all the rest of it just rely on nature. There's a whole new world out there, lots of things to learn. These are pretty good if you're lucky enough to find these. Really recommend these. Just self inflating there. Really well made. And they're nice and thick too. They're a little bit on the heavy side, but they're really tough. So you've got no worries about just throwing it straight onto the floor and not worry about it getting punctured. It's just ripstop, mega tough, mega tough stuff. Ken, you know what that is? And you know what that is? Time to eat the cheese. <laughs> Open wide. <laughs> eat the cheese, baby. <laughs> hey. That's how <hardcore>. cool. <laughs> how is it, bro? Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Come on! Fuck. <laughs> 
Spit it out. All right. This is the rack fear factor. All right. Hell yeah, take it. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> 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 Damn. <laughs> Did that come out of his nose? <laughs> they came out of his nose. It's always better the second time. Hell yeah. <laughs> Eat that cheese, bitch. Hell yeah. Well, this is where Chris was staying. And uh, it's pretty much exactly how we found it. Apart from the difference of where the rain was and where it's dry underneath. But it's only a matter of time before that's all uh, back to normal. There's just a few lightweight pieces of equipment that took us on the trip with us. And it's the big area where I was staying. Exactly the same. Wet, dry. Uh, there's no rubbish, we checked everything. Everything's nice and good. Where the fire was. We put lots and lots and lots of um, water on that. And we just touched it, moved it around loads, and it was cold. It does take a lot because it was only quite recent we was having a fire on there. Some wood chopping that was being done earlier, that's all been scattered around, hidden out of the way. And the little wood stools all back in order. We've got some uh, extra additions thanks to the uh, the chop master. <laughs> Good work mate. We've got some extra logs in there now. Pretty much protected. Well that's a great camp. Had a really nice time, mate. How about I yourself? Had a great time. Even, Thanks. Even though the weather, mate, it doesn't really matter, does it? No. As long as you look after yourself and stuff. And uh, yeah, we've uh, made sure everything's all cleared up out of the way and uh, all good, nothing bad, as someone might say. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, until the next time, mate. Thanks very it's much. It's been wicked. Appreciate it. We'll do it again soon, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Ken, you missed out, mate, but one day, be the free amigos, right? <laughs> wicked. Go. Just goes to show, it doesn't matter what the weather is, always try and get out when you can. And try and make it a rule to yourself that always try and learn something new every time you go out as well. So uh, that's basically it. Nice and simple, we stay dry, we still alive. <laughs> and uh, it's been a great time, it really has. Love from across the pond, right? <laughs> it's been wicked. Thanks for watching and stay funky.